Hello again and welcome to another tutorial video on getting your favorite keyboard into QMK. To really make use of this tutorial, I would recommend you watch the How to Trace Your Switch Matrix video before continuing any further. You can find that in the links in the description section down below. If you have already, well, keep watching. Today we have the Taylor 5 Gate 10 year old Tawny Port. It's bottled by Quinta and Vineyard Bottlers. As with most ports, this 750 milliliter bottle has 20% alcohol content. This is my second port on the show. I am in no means a port expert, but I'm getting there. A Tawny Port is a port that's been aged in a barrel. This one in particular has been aged for 10 years. You can definitely smell the oaky aroma. As I drink it, I feel a nice warm feeling go down my throat and into my tummy. This is definitely a much more pleasurable port to drink. At $24, the 10 year Tawny is an excellent drink. I like it much better than the Porto Morgado from the previous episode. That one was only $6, so I can imagine that it's less quality. The color is a little more subdued. It's actually very amber, amber brown. This is a dangerous port. I think I could drink this all night. Anyway, let's get back to it. Okay, so I'm going to assume that you already know the pins and the switch matrix of the keyboard you have. For this tutorial, we are going to use the Doyu Studio D060 as our practice board. Go to keyboardlayouteditor.com and create the keyboard layout you desire. For our purposes, we are just going to do the standard 60% ANSI layout. Once you have finished this, click on the raw tab and copy all the raw code. Next, go to the website called kbfirmer.com. Please note, that while kbfirmware.com and the associated qmkkeyboard.cn both support QMK, they are running a QMK from about 2017. There have been hundreds, if not thousands, of bug fixes, optimizations, and new features since then. However, for our purposes, this will do just fine. Paste the raw code from Keyboard Layout Editor and press the Import button you will be greeted with a wiring diagram that the tool provides as a default setting. Unless you're very lucky, this wiring will be incorrect. First things first, click on the pins tab and fill out the pins used. The first row you put in will be designated as row zero, the next will be row one, so forth and so on. The same numbering can be applied to column pins. While it doesn't matter all that much in what order you put your pins in, keeping it a certain way will help with the next step. For the D060, the row pins used are D0, D1, D2, D3, and D5. For the column pins, it's F0, F1, E6, C7, C6, B6, D4, B1, B7, F4, B4, D7, D6, B3, and B0. You can even set up various indicator, RGB, and backlight LED pins here. Now go to the wiring tab and do the wiring you traced earlier. You can accomplish this by clicking on a key and setting it to the correct row and to the correct column. For example, if you were to set this particular key to row 3, column 1, that would correspond to pin D3 and F0. Make sure it really does. In our case, this key is actually set to row 0, column 1, meaning it is connected to pins D0 and F1. Go through the rest of the board and set things up appropriately. Next, go to the key map tab and make an appropriate key map. Go to the Compile tab and you can either make your firmware here, which will result in a .hex file, or you can download the source for other edits. While this source can be compiled regularly, 
and give you a suitable firmware using QMK, it is not sufficient to directly submit into the QMK repository. However, if you do, be prepared for the numerous comments that reviewers such as myself will put on that PR, and we will make you change quite a few things. Some of these changes include replacing the include guards with Pragma 1s, changing the name of layout macros from all caps keymap to all caps layout, addition of a readme file, in rules.mk changing question mark equals to just equals, also in rules.mk changing boot magic equal yes to either full or light. You pretty much get the picture. There are many changes to be had and I'm not even done with that list. Anyway, thank you very much for viewing this video. I hope it has shed some light on the entire porting process. If you want to learn more, please make sure you check out the rest of the videos in this expanding series, and of course, several of my live Twitch streams. I'll see you all next time. Goodbye now.